first push day of the week. We're back at the incline barbell bench press, uh, second week trying this exercise. Uh, last week didn't go so great, but one thing I was happy about, my shoulder wasn't hurting afterwards. So we're trying a little bit heavier this week. Let's see if my shoulder can handle it. Um, overall, I feel pretty good. It's a new week. Renewing my goals and having more clarity in terms of the sense of direction with things uh, definitely helped a lot with just experiencing a newfound uh, motivation. I feel like this is the first week where things are actually set and, um, and, and planned out properly. And I'm not just kind of going day by day, especially in terms of my energy levels, which feel a lot better now. My sleep, uh, my schedule and how everything's organized. Okay, pretty smooth. Definitely felt like I had more in the tank and I felt the shoulder every step of the way, but realistically I have to train more shoulder flexion but also strengthen the shoulder, especially since I've been using all exercises that don't really challenge the stabilizers. It's actually feeling progressively better. I just did three sets of seven, so we're all with about one to two reps in reserve, maybe even three reps in reserve on the first one. Uh, but it's actually feeling progressively better. I'm feeling progressively stronger. So it's definitely just a case of getting adapted to this. And so um, I decided to just stick to this way, do four sets of seven reps with about two reps in reserve. And then next week I'll uh, attempt a hundred and see how that feels. So yeah, final set. I should still be able to do. Oh, forgot to say, yeah. I kept a minute and a half sharp in between each set. <laughs> nice. Pretty smooth. 100 next week. Decided to opt for a different second exercise. I'm going to do a cable press, which is an exercise that I never ever do, but I thought, let me speed up the process of getting my stabilizers back in shape. So uh, what better exercise than a cable exercise to train that? So the setup is very similar to a cable chest fly, but um, I'm actually aiming to bend the elbows, so a little bit more elbow flexion to actually go into a pressing movement. The only awkward thing about this exercise is that because of the weight, it's a bit... Uh, it's a bit difficult to get in position at the very beginning, but especially if you're uh, a light motherfucker like me. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 <sighs> yeah, see what I mean? Just getting in position is all good as fuck. But uh, feels good. Actually, it feels much better than a normal chest press. I will definitely keep this in my rotation for as long as it's needed to strengthen my rotator calf and uh, yeah, and just push a bit heavier on the, on the incline bench press. Third exercise, body weight dips. 
Uh, I'm actually going to do it weighted this time, so I'm going to add a bit of extra resistance. Just 15 kilos, nothing crazy, but just so that I can stay more in a medium rep range and actually train a little bit closer to failure. Um, I gotta say, this session is going pretty well so far. I'm doing a lot more volume than usual, but, um, but the exercises feel good. Uh, obviously I'm not going as heavy as I would have if I was using a Smith machine or a chest press, but the movements themselves feel good. And I know that they're purposeful to just rebuild as much strength as possible. Chest flies to finish off with at the machine. Let's see if I can take this to failure. Rest pause. That's the best chest fly I've done in a long while. Oh man, can't even describe how it feels to do this exercise. Almost pain free. Such a relief. Okay, first delt exercise is the standing lateral raises machine. I'm going to do single arm. Again, just placing the handle right on my wrist to eliminate the wrist joint to, to get it out of the equation. I'm also going to position myself at a bit of an angle and get myself more into a path where I don't have to force my internal rotation as much. Realize that just hurts my shoulder a little bit less and uh, it's also a little bit more effective. Also, it gets the traps out of the equation a little bit more. But yeah, let me show you. So the machine is going that way. It's opening up laterally and I'm positioning myself towards you guys, so towards the camera. And then, placing the handle on the wrist, and going up this way. So it's still a lateral raise, but a bit more like a Y raise. So I don't have to internally rotate as much. Feels great to be honest. <sighs> Feel the strains on my side delt. <clears throat> Come on. Ah, <clears throat> oh, fuck. Ah, <clears throat> some power shots. <clears throat> Fuck. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Oh. Okay, final superset for the day is radio out machine uh, with seated uh, dumbbell lateral raises. I always do this every single week and never filmed it because uh, the gym is too busy. But today we're actually quite um, quite lucky as the gym is nice and quiet. So a perfect time to film it. So we're going for a medium rep range here. This is actually my second set. So I'm already quite fatigued. Depress the shoulder, retract, push the chest into the pad, and extend. Mm. 
I feel like I really need to start learning how to pose. <laughs> to recap, this is what we did. Barbell incline bench press. Three weights this time. Really, really happy this is back in my routine. Uh, I did four sets of seven reps with about two reps in reserve. Then we moved on to a cable press. First time doing this exercise, actually. I uh, didn't load an awful lot of weight, but I just really wanted to control it, feel it, find the right angle. I think I found a pretty nice setup. So not sure if I'm going to keep this in my routine or not, but um, it definitely felt good today. And it's definitely a new exercise, a new secret weapon uh, I can use at any time. Did four sets of that between 8 to 12 reps. Actually did take these to failure. Then we moved on to some weighted dips. Uh, three sets with that um, between 8 to 12 reps. So I had a 15 kilograms extra resistance. Chest flyer, the two rest, three rest ball sets between 8 to 12, starting between 8 to 12 reps. Did the standing lateral raises machine. Three straight sets between 8 to 12 reps with some added partials at the end. Just to finish off, uh, the rear delt, the, the rear delt machine, super set with lateral raises, did four sets of that. Two sets between six to 10 reps, a little bit heavier. And then uh, two sets a bit more metabolic between 10 to 15. But that was it with the workout. Gotta say definitely the best push session I had in a while, even though didn't do anything spectacular in terms of the weights. It actually felt really good. Really happy that there's loads of these exercises I used to do in the past that I haven't been able to do in the, in the, in the last six, six to eight months, actually. It's been quite quite a while, uh, so I'm happy to be able to reintroduce them in, uh, in a split. Uh, I wanted to raise a bit of a hot topic uh, at the moment. No, it's not, it's not really a hot topic, but I feel like on the internet there's a uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of different opinions about masculinity and, uh, you know, what that really means and toxic masculinity and etc. I don't necessarily want to talk about masculinity specifically, but I do think that there's something about the, the culture of masculinity where uh, guys just tend to hide their emotions. We always have the tendency to kind of close ourselves off, to numb ourselves down. But the, the issue with that is that it's actually going to catch up to you. It's going to put you in a very reactive state. When you don't deal with your emotions and you tend to just suffocate them and, and, and push them down, they're going to come up in a way where you're just taking action without thinking and you're in this state where life just comes at you and you're reacting to it based on your subconscious thoughts and based on the emotions that you're trying so hard to suffocate. So I think in bringing more awareness to how you're actually feeling is a very healthy thing to do. Funny enough, the life expectancy of women is much longer because they're acknowledging how they're feeling and expressing how they're feeling. It puts them in a position where they're actually in a much healthier state of mind where they're not ignoring how they're feeling, but they're dealing with it. How they're dealing with it is it's a different conversation, but they're allowing themselves to feel. And that's really the bottom line of what I'm trying to say. Because as Chris Mumstead always says, if you numb the bad, you also numb the good. 
meaning that if you try to suffocate all the bad emotions, all the, the suffering and all the pain, you're also not allowing yourself to feel the happiness and feel the pleasure when that comes. We have a wide spectrum of emotions and allowing ourselves to feel across the whole spectrum it means that we're enhancing life itself we are enhancing our experience uh, and this means that when good things happen we're ready to really take them in so always remember that being numb is not being strong being strong is acknowledging how you're feeling allowing yourself to feel and then deal with that emotion in a mature way where you're being perhaps more analytical than reactive. This is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, I'm posting one video a day for a year straight. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow.